Little one will become a great nation. In other words, God says, when my glory comes, everything will multiply. Everything is going to accelerate because of the glory of Almighty God. Well, praise the Lord, everyone, and welcome to The Overflowing Life. Well, I'm so excited about this series that we're in as all over the past several months, we have been preaching and experiencing revival. And today we're gonna to continue this series as we're looking at the fires of revival, but what happens when the glory fills the city? I believe that entire cities are getting ready to come into the kingdom of God. We're going to see examples of it. You know, one sermon was preached in Nineveh, and the whole city came because of the glory of God. One sermon was preached by an evangelist by the name of Philip, and the entire city of Samaria came to God. Jesus got one man delivered of a demon spirit in 10 cities in a place called Decapolis. They all came to God. We're about to experience these powerful moves of God, and we're going to discover some things about that today. What happens when the glory glory of God fills the city. So you get your Bible, pen, and paper, go along with us, and then we'll be back at the end of the broadcast to let you know how you can get your copy of this series so that revival can come to your house. So right now, let's go to the Metro Church. We'll be back in just a few moments. The glory of God is about to hit the earth. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. But I want to focus today on our cities. Everybody say our cities. So we see Nineveh was changed when the glory came. Samaria was changed when the glory came. Decapolis was changed when the glory came. Now, when the glory of God falls, it creates an atmosphere of reverence, repentance, and reconciliation. Everybody say reverence, reverence. repentance, and reconciliation. Now I want to talk about reverence for just a moment. I told you one of the spirits that God said we had to pray against is the spirit of blasphemy. There's a blasphemous spirit that has been released in America. It's a spirit of irreverence. And sometimes when folk you respect don't act right, but they're still in position, it make you want to blaspheme. And as a spirit of blessing, I don't care whether it's a pastor, I don't care if it's your daddy, I don't care who it is, hey man, you got to respect them, but behind the scene, you cussing. <laughs> y'all know, y'all don't want to go with me, y'all want to go. That's a spirit of blasphemy. And the spirit of blasphemy has been released in America. We've never seen a time like right now where so many folk are saying, he ain't my this and he ain't my this. Why? That's a spirit of blasphemy that has been released in the land. Come on, somebody. And it has come about as a result of irreverence. Everybody say irreverence. irreverence. It's a spirit of irreverence. Now think about this for a minute. The first thing that happens when the glory of God comes, there will be reverence. We call it the fear of God. So when we pray, that's the first thing on our prayer list. Huh? We call them the four, corner st four cornerstones of prayer. The Lord taught me this when I was a young preacher. He said, son, if you want to see change, you got to pray these four things. Number one is for the fear of the Lord. Everybody say the fear of the Lord. Fear the Lord. Ain't nothing going to happen if folk don't fear God. Amen. You can preach all you want, ain't nothing going to happen. That's where our nation is right now. Folk don't fear God. Amen. They don't fear God, but that's getting ready to change. Amen. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Yes. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil pride, arrogance in every evil way. The fear of the Lord is to depart from evil. Amen. Folk ain't going to depart from evil if they don't fear God. Amen. So the first thing that's going to happen is reverence. Everybody say reverence. reverence. All the crazy stuff that's going on in America now over statues. Because statues are images. It's about who we're going to glorify and what we're going to glorify. Amen. So, I mean, I, I kind of have just a little problem with them all together, but I mean, I ain't, I ain't tripping. I ain't tripping about it. I mean, you want to make one, that's fine. But we have to be careful how we allow that to get before God. Amen, amen, amen. So, 
God will let them stay till you begin to put them before him. You start putting before God, something getting ready to happen. You say, preacher, did that happen in the Bible? Yes, it happened in the Bible. Can y'all remember? Amen, amen, amen. Glory to God. The children of Israel made a mistake, just like the church is making. We're not valuing God's glory the way that we should. That's the only thing we got. So the children of Israel made a mistake. They stopped honoring God. And the Bible said a day came when the Philistines, their enemy, came in and got the Ark of the Covenant, which is where the glory of God was, and they took it and they hauled it off. The children of Israel knew they were naked without that. They knew they could not fight a battle without it. But the Philistines took it, and when they took it, they didn't know what to do with it. Men never know what to do with God's glory if they're not saved. <laughs> if they don't know God, they don't know what to do with his glory. They didn't know God. And then the people of God who know God, amen, we don't value it. And so these heathens got a hold of the glory of God. Can y'all remember that story? And when the glory of God left, amen, one of the boys, their wife had a baby, and she named him Ichabod which come from the Hebrew word kabod, which means glory. Yes, sir. She said ichabod, which means the glory of God has departed. Come on, somebody. Amen. And she wept before God because the glory of God had departed. Everybody said the glory, glory. had departed. Now that word kabod, amen, number one, watch this. Number one, that word kabod, amen, it means heavy. It means weighty. Amen. Amen. It mean, that word means weight or heavy. Have you ever seen somebody, they're real smart, they say, that dude heavy. Huh? That dude heavy. That means, watch, that means what weight do you attach to it? The reason you bring your tithes and offerings to God is because of the weight that you place up on it. You see, it. this is the most important thing I do. It comes before my bills. It comes before everything else. Why? Because God should get the glory with my money. Whenever we don't give God the glory, which means weight, it means heavy, when we start putting too much weight and value on something else, come on somebody, then that thing get ready to fall. Oh my God. So what happened? The Philistines took the Ark of the Covenant and here's what America does. They didn't want to get rid of it. They just want to put it in with their other God. Huh? In other words, they like, okay, God, um, you just go, no, no, I'm going to treat you nice. I'm going to let you sit on the front row with all the other gods. You're on the front row now. We, you're on the front row with all the other gods. No, God don't sit with no other God. That's what we're trying to do with America. See, we, we real religious. We want to just blend God in with all our other gods. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. So they put God in there with all the rest of the gods, but something very strange happened. All right. yes, sir. The next morning they came in, and all the other gods were on their face. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. all, right. all the other gods were on their face. Yes, sir. Even a statue. Got enough sense to know when God in the house. Getting quiet up in here now. Even if the folk that made them don't got that much sense, the stature got enough sense. When God come in the house, I'm going down. I'm going down. So whether we pull them down or not, when the glory come, Somebody out there going down. I ain't talking about, I ain't trying to, see, you got to understand that's what happens when we exalt something above God. Amen, amen, amen. That's why the Bible says we need to pull down every stronghold that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. See, not only do we have to pull down those statues, we got to pull down those thoughts. That thought is a thought that has exalted itself above the Word of God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And even though you got preachers trying to defend it, you can't defend it. 
and you can't disguise it as history. If it's history, how come all of them went up when Jim Crow was coming? Yes, sir. All right, all right. See, I, I ain't, look, I ain't tripping over no statue. I want y'all to know, I don't care. They can leave them up. They ain't going to bother you. Better not put your hands on me. And on my children. You keep all the statues. I ain't tripping about it. Keep them all. I don't care. You just got to know I'm a child of God. And the Bible says, touch not my anointing. But if you really want to do what's right, Listen, here's what the Lord told me. Building a statue to honor your sin is like a man putting a portrait of his mistress in his bedroom and calling it art. Now, somebody got to say this. Somebody got to see, stop lying. If you want the thing, just put the thing up there and say, the reason I got it up here is to remind you black folk y'all ain't nothing. I can handle that, man. I can handle that. Praise the Lord. You can't tell me who I am no way. Just because you think I ain't nothing, my God said I'm somebody. And so if you stupid enough to believe that, go ahead and believe it. So I ain't tripping, but stop lying about it. Huh? Let me tell you something. The same folk, and I tell, tell my preacher friend that if you really believe that, Go get a picture of your girlfriend all right, all right. and hang it in the bedroom yeah. and tell your wife it's art. All right. yeah. And watch them skillets start. Come on, somebody. It's going to be some skillets and some grits, some hot grits. Come on, somebody. She going to let... Okay, y'all, y'all, I ain't advocating that. I ain't advocating that. I'm trying to put a graphic picture. Don't, don't, I ain't tell y'all to put no... Come on now. That, that's my deal. That's my deal came out of me. I, I'm just trying to let you understand how you think your wife would feel. She forgave you. She forgave you. You went out and committed adultery, all them mistresses you got. How you think she feel? You got a gallery of all your mistresses up there. Talking about, let's get over. How am I going to get over? You got a picture still up. And don't call it art, baby. Doesn't that look good? Isn't it Beautiful. Beautiful. Somebody got to tell the truth. I say, somebody got to tell the truth. It may be beautiful to you, but all I can see is you laying with her. All, come on, somebody. What did, what, did, what did God tell Abraham? Huh? Abraham and Sarah thought they came up with a plan. Amen. Sarah, you know, couldn't hide no baby and all like that. She said, okay, you can lay huh, with my maid. Yeah. All right. Sound good at the time. Until every time she saw her. Memory. <laughs> Come on now, y'all know I'm telling the truth. Y'all, see, see we, we try to act so religious and spiritual, and, and we just have to get down. Don't nobody want to see that woman? Right. And then not only that, huh? Abraham out there playing with the boy. Y'all don't want y'all don't even want to go with me. Y'all don't want to go with me. Y'all don't go with me. Huh? She tried to get over it. She tried to get past it. But every time she thought she was past it, here come Hagar. She went and told Abraham, said, put out. Abraham said, I can't do that, baby. I can't do that. That's part of my history. Can't you see Sarah? He said, let me pray about it. Abraham didn't get on his knees. Good God said, put out. Everybody said, put out. So, I mean, like I say, that's just the Bible. Folk ain't got to do what the Bible say. They can do what they want to do. But uh, <laughs> praise the Lord. Now, guess what happened? When they brought that statue in there, not only did that statue fall on his face, but everybody in Philistia got hemorrhoids. I thought that was strange when I first read it. I said, Lord, why don't they, you know, just smite them with this, that, and the other? Lord said they got hemorrhoids. I ain't never had no hemorrhoids. Don't want none. 
But I'm told you have a hard time sitting down. In other words, when the glory of God comes, everybody's going to stand up. That's just going down, and men going to stand up. Somebody shout hallelujah. Get your copy of today's life-changing message. A whole city was saved when God's glory showed up. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. All, it all it takes is the glory of God. Learn to live the life God designed for you when you order today's message by writing to us. Visit our website or call 1-800-465-6830. You will be continually resetting until you, till you genuinely repent. All right. Look at our government. All I'm doing is resetting every week. Yes, sir. <laughs> Look at some of the saints. All we do is resetting every week. Uh, my, my. See, if I repent, change my thinking, I ain't got to reset every five. I'm having a reset. I'm having a reset. The White House having a reset. I'm having a reset. The church having a reset. Why don't you just repent? You want to reset so much. Come on, lift both hands to heaven. Say, Lord, help me to genuinely repent. See, when that real glory hit our cities, our cities are going to repent. We're going to have a change of heart, a change of mind, a change of thinking. Somebody shout hallelujah. The other thing that's going to lead to is reconciliation. See, when the glory of God hits... There's going to be reconciliation among the races. You want to know why? Because when the glory of God hits, now let me go ahead and dispel something. I don't, I don't want you to misunderstand what I'm saying. I hear some people say, I don't see color. You lying. <laughs> see, you're messing up God's purpose when you do that. God ain't got no problem with people being different color. So quit saying, I don't see color. I know what people are trying to say. They're just trying to say it doesn't affect the way I treat them. I understand what I'm saying. But see, some folk use that as a blinder. I'm just going to act like I don't see you. Amen. Then it becomes a covering. Amen. Well, we can hide behind religious rhetoric and political dogma and say everybody the same until it comes to us splitting up the money. Y'all don't mind me telling the truth, do you? See, if, if, if you don't, if, if, if that's really true, amen. How come when you say something, it's presented in an argument, but when I do it, I'm angry? Huh? See what I'm saying? This is just stuff that's been in our mind so long right. on both sides yes, that the only thing that's going to get it out is the glory of God. Yes. Somebody shout the glory of God. The glory of God, the glory of God is going to get it out. See, so when the glory of God comes, flesh will not glory in its presence. Right. It don't mean you don't see that color. It's just no flesh will glory. Right. When the glory of God comes, I am not going to think I'm inferior to you. And you're not going to think you're superior to me. Right. Because when the glory of God comes, the only thing I got my mind on is him. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Everybody say reverence, reverence. Repentance, repentance, reconciliation. reconciliation. Okay, let's get these in real quick. Now, 10 things are going to happen when the glory of God hits. We find these all in Isaiah chapter 60. Number one, the Bible says the Gentiles were influx. There would be an influx of Gentiles. That means people that don't know the Lord, they're coming. Everybody say they coming. they coming. The second thing that's going to happen is governments will be influenced. Amen. Governments will be influenced. We're going to see governments are going to be influenced by the glory of God. The third thing we see is generations will be gathered. Generations. Somebody shout generation. generation. Whole generations that we thought were lost are going to be brought to God. Everybody say the millennials are coming. Yeah. Generations will be gathered. The fourth thing that's going to happen is that gold and silver will multiply. 
The Bible said when they come, they're going to they gonna bring that gold and they're going to bring that silver. Amen. We're going to see a, not only a great influx of people, amen, but we're going to see the financial wealth, which is a part of glory. That's a part of the glory of God. See, if folk been stealing the glory of God, that includes his money. Amen, amen. And so all the wealth, the Bible says the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof and all they that dwell therein, the people that dwell in the earth. Amen. They are supposed to give glory to God. I like this next one. Graffiti walls will be restored. What do I mean by graffiti walls? Amen. Places in, the, in our cities that are, that are worn down to the point to where they're disrespected. God says, I'm getting ready to rebuild the walls. Everybody say, rebuild the wall. Amen. He's going to rebuild the walls of our city. Amen. Every place where our cities, amen, have been defiled and, and, and people have been writing despicable things on it because of their anger and because of feeling like they've been disenfranchised and all the other kind of things, God says they're going to be restored. Somebody shout restored. restored. The fifth thing that's going to happen. Amen. Watch this. Amen. Uh, the sixth thing, amen, is gruesome enemies will bow and submit. Amen. In verse 14, it says, our enemies will bow. Our enemies will submit. I'm talking about the most gruesome of enemies. Amen. They're going to submit to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. The Bible lets us know that grace and favor will be bestowed. Somebody shout grace and favor. Grace and favor. Amen. Grace and favor are going to be bestowed upon us. Amen. In the, in the uh, message Bible, amen, it says, instead of hand me down. God's going to give you his best. The day is over for our inner cities being filled with hand-me-down. Somebody didn't catch that. That means not to everybody else do what they're going to do. Then you throw the rest of it in the city. God said that day has ended. When the glory of God comes, somebody shout Hallelujah. I ain't talking about no more raggedy schools and old raggedy streets and hand-me-downs and leftovers and, 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 and you know, getting the hind part of, the, of, of the, you know what I'm talking about. Amen. Those days are over. Somebody shout, those days are over. Those days are over. Amen. God says grace and favor is going to be restored. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody shout glory to God. Glory to God. Now, I want to focus in on this one. I want to focus in on this one. Great peace and tranquility shall replace violence. Go to verse 18. I got, I got, I'm running through here, but I got to stop on this one. Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 18. Here's something the Lord showed me the other day that we got to start standing on more firmly than we ever have before. Notice in Isaiah chapter 60, verse 18. Violence shall no more be heard in your land, wasting nor destruction within thy borders. But you shall call your wall salvation and your gates praise. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Uh, can y'all put that up in the message Bible? I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. Can y'all put that uh, Isaiah 60 up there that I, oh, in the message Bible? Because I want y'all to see this in the message Bible. Look what it says. There will be no more stories of crime in your land. Channel 7, Channel 11, Channel 4, 13. That's not going to be the lead story anymore in the news. There will be no more stories of crime in your land. No more robberies, no more vandalism. Watch this, y'all. We got to work on this one. You will name your main street Salvation Way. <laughs> uh, yeah, man, meet me over there on the corner of uh, Salvation Way and, and Poplar. See, because our governments are going to be so changed, our mayors are going to be, our cities are going to be so changed. Look what it said. You're going to name your main street Salvation Way. Now watch this. Ain't through. Watch this. And install Praise Park at the center of town. Ha, <laughs> <laughs> Glory to God. You're going to name your chief thoroughfare Salvation Way, and your main gathering place is going to be called Praise Park. My God, in other words, when we gather together, we're going to come to praise the Lord. 
My God, we're going to have the days of heaven on earth. I know some of you are saying, Bishop, can it really happen? Yes, it will happen. When the glory of God is getting ready to hit our city, the glory of God is getting ready to hit this place. The Bible said there will be no more violence in our cities. My God, we're going to call Main Street Salvation Way. Can you imagine that? You look out here on these little placards that they have the name the streets. Amen. And they call it Salvation Way. Amen. Our main gathering places in the city, amen, they call Praise Park. What about if Verizon Arena became Praise Park? Oh, I hear the Holy Ghost up in here. I'm telling you, all these things will begin to happen when the glory of God hits the place. Everybody say, the glory of God. God. About to hit this place. Amen. Peace and tranquility will will replace violence. Gross darkness will be replaced with light. And growth and multiplication will occur supernaturally. The Bible said one of you will become a thousand. God can take one person and multiply them in thousands. And he said a little one will become a great nation. In other words, God says, when my glory come, everything will multiply. Everything is going to accelerate because of the glory of Almighty God. Well, praise the Lord. I know you were blessed by today's message. And you know, I love it in Isaiah chapter 60. It says, when this revival comes, there'll be no more violence in our cities. Woo, glory to God. God says, I'm going to handle that. There'll be no more violence in our cities. And he said, you're going to call your main streets Salvation Way. Amen. Amen. He said, you're going to call your gathering places Praise Park. That's what's going to happen when the glory of God hits our cities. Now, we want you to get this message in its entirety along with this entire series concerning revival fires. The information is right there on your screen, so don't you hesitate. Go ahead and get your copy of it. Share it with others because this revival is about to spread. We want you to be a part of it. Revival is here in Jesus' name. So go to our website, get on the phone, write us, do whatever you have to do because we want to spread this message just as rapidly and as widely as we can. And speaking of revival, it's time for the 2017 A Call to Excellence Fall Holy Ghost Revival. Dr. Jennifer is on go. She's ready to get it. Glory to God. This year's theme is Stay Woke. Oh, my goodness. This thing is going to be powerful. A little different this year. It's going to be on a Thursday night and a Friday night. On Friday night, we're going to close out with a special concert with our special guest, amen, David and Nicole Binion. Oh, my God. This thing is going to be powerful. A 100-voice choir. Ladies and gentlemen, when you get in the middle of this revival and all this praise and worship, it's going to be a life-changing experience. So stay tuned at the end of the broadcast for more information about the upcoming 2017 A Call to Excellence Holy Ghost Revival. Listen, we got to go. We'll see you next time right here on The Overflowing Life.